So, well, um, how about I start with just reading you um, the opening passage of, of the book, so The Secret Home. Um, not so long ago, in a land far from here, lived a man by the name of Zygmunt. As a boy, he walked seven miles over the mountains to school and seven miles back home, even in winter when snow lay white and deep on the ground. As a man, he met, loved, and then wed a woman, Francesca. Together, they were blessed with a beautiful, bright child, and they named him Henrik. Zygmunt, Francesca and Henrik lived in a small village among the mountains, surrounded by forests of tall, fragrant pines. So begins this tale. In this land, a war began, bringing great upheaval. So this book tells the story of my father and grandparents who were sheltered, hidden and cared for by a Polish Christian family during the war. Um, my grandfather and Josef, who was, um, he happened to have the great fortune of meeting early in the years of the war. Um, together they dug out an underground space, very small, just small enough to fit my father and grandparents. And there they remained um, safe for three and a half years until the war ended. So this is that story. Um, well, I think um, this, one of the strongest beginnings was that my grandfather told my sisters and I this story from a very young age, many times, sort of, and in a very relaxed, matter of fact manner. Um, he was, he sort of appeared to not, appeared to sort of be able to talk very comfortably about it. Um, and, and it became, you know, such a, it almost became like a bit of a family legend or myth. Um, I mean, we knew obviously we knew it was true, but it, it you know it was such a strong story that we heard so often, and I guess in its in its form so overwhelmingly positive, even though there was the difficult parts and the losses in the war. That that um, I mean, for me and I think my sisters too, we sort of um, it was quite a treasure for us this story, and um, so I began painting about eighteen years ago, and my first paintings were just figures in landscapes and the, the the faces looked a lot like my grandfather and so then I kind of there was not much of a leap to start to draw him into this story which had quite strong visual elements like the you know I remember thinking you know it'd be amazing to draw draw them the three of them underground and there was the the yellow flower that was a very um, powerful moment for my father that he witnessed the only time he saw something during the day and there was the ship's voyage and I think a lot of these things felt translated well to a series of images telling the story and then um, I later added the words the manuscript to sort of tell what I couldn't add in into the images to sort of fill it out and make it um, add, add more depth and in, you know, that was many year, a many years process. I spoke to dad a lot about things that sort of wanted to draw out what was most memorable for him, even though he was such a young boy, he has these sort of snippets of quite strong fragments of memory, like seeing the yellow flower and, and the soldiers once came banging under the cellar where they could hear, hear them searching. And so a few things I sort of wanted to make sure I included that were important to him and I listened to my grandfather's testimony. He did the Shoah Foundation testimony which was really beautiful to listen to and added a few a few things that um, I might not have remembered. So yeah and then slowly I did I did try to um, get it published and eventually ended up self-publishing myself which um, also ended up being a, a great freedom in many ways in terms of being able to make it a bit longer than most picture books um, and I could you know edit it to um, the way that um, felt most true to the story and so it, it, you know that was also an interesting part of the journey too to be able to have the finished product sort of totally in in my creative realm yeah
Um, so the, I think one of the stronger things that I think has influenced my painting has been naive art. Um, I got an encyclopedia of naive art for my bat mitzvah as a gift and I've lived through that um, many times over the years and I think um, also being um, a self-taught artist I haven't um, and not having formal training I guess in my paintings have, um, have an element of that I think um, and when I, I I guess I also when I began painting I was painting to um, try and evoke you know feelings or moments um, and I would sort of use my use my own reflection of what I saw and if I managed to capture the things I was aiming to capture so it was sort of a process of refinement um, eventually I ended up painting in watercolors I tried gouache and the watercolors um, I mean, it was a great discovery to find so that's so radiant and rich in color um, and had that nice combination of intense color as well as sort of a an ability to sort of allow in some light um, which was a lovely process and, and and a great discovery to come across painting it was like learning a new language or has been and it's like having another language to speak which has been um you know being able to uh, make in images something I couldn't actually say necessarily in words. So. Oh, well, I've always also really loved anything um, that has the tone of fable, fairy tale, myth, legend, um, tales of any kind um, that I guess might be seen as kind of an old-fashioned style but um, I've always you know since I was young and even still now love reading in that sort of format or um, language so um, I guess I was keen to capture some of the qualities of that kind of in that kind of genre without obviously any I didn't particularly need it to be too strong but I love that the way that um, some of that language can, it's almost like, can be quite transporting to um, to a kind of a realm where things feel deep and rich and perhaps quite evocative and almost have a magical quality, although I'm obviously not talking about anything magical in this story, that, that um, you know, I like that sort of mysterious quality that that language can evoke that can perhaps be quite... Um, speak quite directly to emotions and the heart rather than the intellect. Um, and uh, I've always really loved language and perhaps other things that, that are sort of the subtle statement rather than the, um, the opposite. I think, you know, the subtle statement or the subtle, you know, anything can actually have, you know, tremendous power. And so I, I think that was something I, I was quite consciously, quite consciously using in, I guess, in a way that um, by just almost laying bare the, the essence of the sort of very simple sort of narrative or parts of the story that people could, you know, with their imagination, their knowledge of where this was and when it was, they could, you know, take more from it perhaps than it was just on the page and it could be they could you know, fill it out with their own sort of feelings and imagination. Um, so the commonest response I do get is people say they cried. <laughs> um, but, you know, all the response that people have responded um, beautifully to the story. Um, a lot of people who've read it obviously already knew the actual story. Um, my parents' friends and my friends, um, but I think they've they've loved to see it. You know, in a you know sort of a whole form has been um, I guess added an element to it. Um, also, I've I've found that you know uh, the whole range of readers have um, been able to appreciate it. 
like my son's class, um, a group of eight and nine year olds really loved it. The teacher, you know, noted that they were really, you know, captivated by the story. Um, my parents' friends who are, you know, elder, more elderly. Um, but my um, my sort of favourite group that I think um, I was perhaps most surprised by was sort of quite a few teenagers have also really enjoyed reading it and found it very moving. And um, yeah, so I think that's that was also a really lovely um, aspect. And we did send, uh, sorry, I did send some copies to the descendants of Yosef and Eleonora, um, their granddaughter, um, to their granddaughter, and then she showed it to her granddaughters. Um, and they loved, they loved reading it. Um, they, got, they translated it from Pol uh, into Polish and um, shared it among the family and friends. And um, and they feel very connected to the story. Um, the the little the two girls who were the great great granddaughters have been, already know the story, and they're still they're in primary school age. And so that's quite lovely to feel that you know. Um, I guess both our families have remained quite connected to the story, and um, which is a very special thing. When it's great to actually be able to make sure keep in touch and um, find them to send them the book which is actually in itself very special.